Hey guys, welcome to the Massive Iron Channel. I'm Steve Shaw. In this video, we're going to talk about seven types of gym douchebags. Are you one of them? I might be one of them, Faz. I don't know. Before I get into this topic, if you have any questions or comments, drop them down below. The best topic ideas I turn into videos just like this. All right, we're going to talk about seven types of gym douchebags, a little lighter type of video. If there's a type of gym douchebag we are not, we don't talk about in this video, please, please drop a comment down below and let us know. So I'm joined with Faz, Faz Lifts. You can check out his YouTube channel at Faz Lifts. Uh, we're gonna, I'm going to put that down below. And Faz, you're at 971 subscribers. We want to get you to 1,000. So anybody that goes over and subscribes to his channel and leaves a comment gets a chance to win the Muscle and Brawn book. This is a hardcover book. So go over, subscribe, leave a comment. You get a chance to win the book. All right, Faz. Seven types of gym douchebags. Which one are you, Faz? I don't even know. I might be one of them. I might have broken one of these rules. Let's start with the uh, the first one. This this list was put together by Faz, but I added a couple at the end. The gym, the overtalker. What is the overtalker? All right, so here we've got the overtalker. Now, this is the one, this is the guy, the girl who overstays their welcome when they're talking to you. Now, you guys know the gym etiquette. Now, if you don't know the gym etiquette, I'm going to educate you on the gym etiquette. The gym etiquette is this. You have a certain amount of time to rest between sets, all right? And within that time, you've got to write down your set. You've got to take a drink. You've got to catch your breath. And there is a minute window where you can potentially squeeze one or two words into a buddy with a buddy right you guys know that you're aware of that the gym over talker oversteps that welcome they completely ignore that etiquette they ignore that window of time that you've got and they talk and they talk and they talk and just when it's time to do the set you're rested you've got your breath back they keep talking that is the gym over talker they ignore that golden window where you've got room to maybe say a couple of words that's the gym over talker yeah, they're like a, a stereo with a volume knob that's that only goes between eight and ten. They can't completely shut off. Uh, they can't complete like w with the uh, with the overtalker. You know, if you got your Beats in your your uh, earphones in, um, that's like leave me alone territory. But you know, you'll be over there in between squat sets trying to catch your breath. Um, you know, you just did a hard set. You know, you're you you feel like death. The good song comes on on your playlist. You're ready for the next set. And some guy goes, hey, man, that's pretty good form. And then you can hear something kind of through your earphones, like something, something. Uh, is somebody talking to me? Hey, man, that's pretty good form. What? That's pretty good form. Thanks. Back in. And then he, he just continues to go, hey, uh, how long did it take you to get to a 600-pound squad? It doesn't fucking matter. You'll never get there. We put it back in. No, I'm just being, being, being a smart ass, but you know how it is. Uh, the guy that, like, if you pull out your ear, ear earphones once, your Beats once to address somebody, and then you put them back in, that's kind of like a uh, a, a message to say, don't bother me again, please. I, I got some business to do. Yeah, and if he's, if he's talking to you, like, and you're having to take your earphones out, it, you must think, you think it to yourself, it, this must be really important. Like, have I not noticed? Is the building on fire? Is something happening? Do I need to call the ambulance? Like, what's Did going I shit myself? <laughs> right. <laughs> what's, what's happened? It must right. be really important if he's disturbing my workout and making me take my headphones out. But no, it's not. He just wants to say hey and talk about the weather. That is yeah, the, over, the overtalker doesn't understand that uh, a workout has many levels. It can be therapy. Uh, it's also your training. It can be your stress relief. But, you know, when you're training, you want to stay in that tube. You you have a, a very rigid structure and set of practices, and you like to stay in your routine to keep the flow going. I'll tell and you the one of the worst. <laughs> the overtalker doesn't understand routine. I'll tell you one of the worst examples that I had uh, a few years back. Um, so I had an overtalker. He was talking to me, and I had my headphones in completely ignored him and he kept trying to speak to me kept trying to speak to me kept ignoring him kept ignoring him in the end he started to tug on my hoodie <laughs> he was standing to the side of me and he started to he says, hey hey faz hey that was the worst and hey, hey, he was just trying to make conversation that was all it was yeah if anybody touches me in the gym uh i don't even want i want to know what's gonna happen <laughs> all right next one fast put your waist back i'm gonna lead off with this one because like 
Um, I don't train at commercial gyms often, but when me and my wife travel, we we had a plan before the pandemic. We had a uh, LA Fitness uh, pass, so we could train anywhere in the United States at LA Fitness. And when we're in the gym, I notice like some guy will be doing the leg press, and he won't take his plates off, and he'll just walk over to the next exercise. And like me being, you know, old. Like, I have no filter anymore. I just go tell her, hey, dude, go put that back. Like, <clears throat> I don't care. What are you going to do? Call me a mean head? I mean, you want to step outside and fight? I don't care. Go put your plates back. So, um, like, we all know the guys that just toss stuff around. But when you're actually in the gym and you see somebody, you're watching somebody, and they don't put their dumbbells back or their weights back right there when you're in the gym – it's just like steam coming out of my ears. The leg press for me is probably the worst one. So uh, I'll give you an example of what happened a couple of years back. There was um, a guy who had just finished doing his partial leg presses right on the leg press, and I wanted to use it next. So he walks off, <clears throat> leaves all his weights on, and I didn't have time to go and you know see who it was. So some guy done his partial leg presses, and he leaves all the weight on. So I ended up taking the weight <laughs> off, any partner and taking the weight off, and then he comes back about 10 minutes later and wants to take the plates i'm like no no i just strip the bread strip the machine from your crappy leg press set and now i'm going to use the leg press and i need these weights because i'm also going to be using these weights and he gets all annoyed with me because he's like oh this guy's being selfish so not only <laughs> did, he, did he not put his weights away but then he got annoyed with me when i stripped the weight machine down and i actually wanted to use the plates so I got some advice for you guys. If you're ever in the gym and uh, you see one of these guys and he leaves stuff, go over to him and go, hey, hey, buddy, hey, pal, hey, hombre, a hey, man of the g king of the gym. Have you ever have you ever seen those memes on the Internet where they they make fun of people that don't put their weights back? You know, just go over there and say that to him and see what happens. All right. Fast. Number three. Uh, number three type of douchebag. Um, people that are on their phone, be, we put down, be mindful of others wanting to use equipment if you're on your phone. So the person on their phone screwing off in between sets, I've even seen somebody sitting there doing, uh, on the leg extension, doing full power texting, you know, in between sets and you, you really lose track of time sometimes. Yeah, so I tell you what seems to be common these days, Steve. Like you've seen these memes on the internet where it's like, okay, you you're kind of making fun of the guy who's asking if how many sets you've got left on the machine. So the joke is, yeah, I've got a billion left, or I've got five left, or I've got ten left. That seems to be the in thing these days. But right. when I was, it was all like, well, why don't we share the equipment? So how many sets you got left? Well, I've got this many sets, but why don't you work in? That doesn't seem to happen anymore. Like, right. what are you? So on that, Steve, like, are you on the side of, hey, I've got this many sets left, leave me alone, or are you on the side of, well, actually, we can use the equipment together? That's what we used to Well, do. you bring up an important point. Things have definitely changed. Like, back in the 80s and 90s, um, and uh, I started lifting at a home gym in the 2000s, so that's kind of when my, you know, commercial gym usage uh, ended for the most part. But back then, if you'd ask, um, hey, can I work in? That was normal. You didn't ask how many sets you had left. You're like, hey, can I work in? Yep. Uh, and maybe one out of 10 times, some some guy would say, uh, no, I only got one set left. You can have it when I'm done. Or, um, you know, I'm doing something, um, you know, and I got two sets left, whatever. But, you know, that was kind of the norm. Now if you'd ask somebody to work in, I mean – I don't know if it's a generational difference or people don't want to swap COVID sweat with you or, you know, whatever. But, you know, I, I just, uh, the old schoolers would get it, but I don't think a lot of the younger guys would. I think it's a generational thing for sure. Like when I offer for people to work in with me, they look at me like I've got three heads. So somebody will come up to me and go, hey, dude, how many sets you got left? And I'll say, you know, I got three, but you can work with me if you want. And they're just like, it just blows their minds. But for me, that was always very normal. Um, so, yeah, my stance on that is just work in. Like, I'm sure your mama told you how to share. <laughs> just, uh, that's my thing. I don't really get the whole, like, yeah, I've got a billion sets left. Leave me alone. 
you know what, you're in a commercial gym, it's not your equipment. And so nowadays, like what I say is, look, I'm working in. I don't ask. <laughs> I'm working in. <laughs> like, I've got too many two sets left. Yeah, I'm working in. Because if he's just sat there goofing off for two or three minutes between sets, I may as well get my set done. There you go. Well, you know, I'm kind of the guy that if somebody is uh, using their phone in a movie theater, I'll, I'll go behind them in their ear and say, if you don't turn that off, I'm going to shove it up your ass. And then they'll t- <laughs> turn around and see a big, hairy, ugly dude. Uh, but <laughs> You know, in the gym, like if somebody, I will respect the initial, I got two, three sets left, okay, fine. But if somebody's on their phone, you know, messing around and we've already had the conversation, I'll, I'll, I won't bat an eye and go over to them and say, hey, man, I respect you got two sets left, but could you stop fucking around on your phone? Yeah. You know, I'm, I might say it a little bit more politely than that. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, you get, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. So, um, the next one, Faz, is the guy that, like, you're invi- th- this guy, you're invisible to this guy. You're doing a set, and this guy, you know, you're facing the mirror, not necessarily just to get your pump on or to stare at your sexy muscles in the mirror, but, you know, there's only so many places you can look in the gym, and you don't want to sit there and stare at the women on the treadmill while you're curling. So you stare in the mirror, and then there's a guy that keeps walking right in front of you as you're you're doing your set. What do you think about this type of gym douchebag? Yeah, so it's a matter of focus, isn't it? It's a matter of focus. Like, you're sat there. You're, most, most gyms are set up where you're sat in, at benches or stations or racks where things are pointing towards mirrors. So when you're in a gym, you're used to working out in front of a mirror, looking at a mirror. Then you've always got one guy. And it, again, this might be a generational thing because it rarely happened back in the day because people were a lot more aware. Right. And he'll walk in front of you repeatedly over and over, just like walking around, looking for a dumbbell, scratching his butt, scratching his head, trying to find something. And he's just meandering in front of you. Now, once or twice is fine, but it's the meandering and the back and forth and the complete lack of awareness where it's like, oh, you're... You're in my you're in my head now. <laughs> I'm trying to yeah, do my right. I'm only counting from one to twelve. And you've been in my field of vision like six times. So it's that. That's what it is. It's not like we're trying to just stare at ourselves in the mirror. It's that breaking of focus, I think, is what is what's really annoying. Yeah, you know, you don't know if they're trying to uh get your attention, like, hey, I'm here, I'm the king, I'm the alpha male, um, or if they're just a bumbling idiot. Uh, you know, but you're right. Back in the day, if somebody was doing something uh, facing the mirror, you wouldn't walk in front of them. And and again, the point needs to be established here is that in a gym, there's only so many places to look. And when you are focused on a set, I would I don't stare into the mirror to see my glistening, you know, uh, veins and all that kind of stuff. But on the other hand. I don't want to turn sideways and stare directly at the the woman doing dumbbell benches either. So you kind of want to be a little bit neutral, and the mirror allows you some opportunity to be a little vision neutral, sh- shall we say? Yeah. And um, some guys just don't understand how that goes. So um, how about the guy that stands directly in front? This is number five. The guy that stands directly in front, and I've never I say guy here because I've never seen a, a woman do it. Yeah. Stand directly in front of the dumbbell rack, and uh, you see, you put not st- not standing directly in front of the dumbbell rack. Uh, uh, go touch on that one fast. This is potentially my biggest pet peeve. So you'll get a guy who'll he'll grab the dumbbells from the rack, and let's assume the rack is just full of dumbbells in the gym that I go to, and he'll just stand right there. So effectively, he's not only using one pair of dumbbells, but he's cutting off you from using another, say, one, two, three, four, five pairs of dumbbells. So effectively, like everyone hates the guy who takes up a lot of equipment in the gym. Effectively, he's taken up six dumbbells because you can't do anything. He's standing there. He's waving his arms around, doing all no kinds of crap form because that's what these people do. And he's just staring intently at the mirror. You can't access any dumbbells. And so that is probably my biggest pet peeve. And in dealing with these people, what I tend to do is I tend to go for the dumbbells regardless <laughs> and just to let them know how close they are to the rack when I go in and reach in and then pick up the dumbbells that I want. Or maybe even if I don't want, I just do it to make a point sometimes because <laughs> that's just how I am. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, that's my pet peeve. You know, the take home here is pretend there's an invisible lane between the dumbbell rack and it comes out 
I don't know, enough, you know, like five feet. So enough for somebody to farmers carry, you know, 80 pound dumbbells uh, and put them back. The, the, I, uh, this, this thing drives me crazy because, you know, whenever you're at a commercial gym and you're doing like when I use the dumbbells, it's always a heavy dumbbell and it's a dumbbell bench. It's a dumbbell row. It's a dumbbell overhead press. And, you know, I'm not trying to sit here and say, I use the heavy dumbbells and get out of my way. I own the dumb. But when you are done with your set and you're trying to farmers carry, you know, 120s back to their position and some somebody's right in front of the, you know, dumbbell rack. And then you got to kind of do some kind of a maze maneuver to, to get back. It's it's a little bit aggravating. Yeah. All right, uh, Faz, I added a couple. Those were your five. So I added a couple, and I actually got one a bonus one that I'm thinking of as we're talking. Uh, the form advice dude. So you would think the form advice dude is limited to people that are on a plane lower than him. Whatever plane he thinks he's on of superiority, that he would just go after the people below his plane. But – when I'm in the gym, I'll have people telling me how to do exercises. And like, <laughs> I'm like, I don't even want to get into trying to explain to this knucklehead what I'm doing. Like if I had to like this fast, the heels elevated wide stance. Good morning is an exercise that's arguably good for the hamstrings. But if you do that in a commercial gym, you're going to attract the form advice, dude. If you are on the cable tricep extension and you allow a little bit of elbow travel up instead of keeping your elbow stapled to your side, if you allow a little bit of elbow travel to try to target the long head of the triceps a little bit more, the form advice dude is going to come over and tell you to keep your elbows tucked in, uh, et cetera. So uh, then the form advice dude will go over on bench and have no control over lowering the weight at all. Uh, so the form advice dude – it's like I can't go a month in the gym without somebody trying to tell me how to lift a weight. So I think, you know what? Here's what I think about guys like that or girls like that, whatever. It's usually guys, though. It's like it must be nice to go through life with that level of confidence, you know? I just want to think. Like, like imagine he'd be, he'd be the kind of guy who would maybe go up to, go up to say, Elon Musk and tell him how to work his finances. Or like go up to Jeff Bezos and tell him how to run a company. <laughs> like, right, 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 it right. must be nice to have that level of confidence, you know, in life. That's, like that's I'm exactly the what they're doing. Gym. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go up to the biggest guy in the gym and I'll say, hey, you know what? Maybe you ought to just train like this because I kind of, I'm kind of know what I'm doing. I'm a big deal. <laughs> like that's what I think about that. that those guys. <laughs> what I do when I see somebody bigger and stronger in the gym faz is I watch them, and I'll say, okay what there if there's something borderline i don't understand I'll, I'll just put it in the memory bank and google it later um if there's a new technique or whatever uh you know but i'll watch his set scheme i'll watch his rep scheme i'll watch what he does but the last thing i'm gonna go go do is is try to correct his form you know for years faz i did a bench press variation where i did not lower the bar to my chest I trained for 10 years where I stopped the bar two to three inches above my chest. And every time I would put a video on the internet, Faz, I would get like every form advice dude um, either criticizing me or, and then uh, Eric Spoto, yeah. you know, came out with what is the Spoto Very press. And then all of a sudden I was ahead of my time. <laughs> right. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's, <laughs> It, it really everything can have a purpose and place and in, in in the gym just kind of be intelligent about it and the i don't know if you've ever trained with your fiance or whatever in the gym but my wife always goes off and does her own thing she does basically the same exercises but we don't do them together because it's just not efficient so um every time we're in the gym working out i look over and somebody will be Come, some form advice dude will come give her advice on form advice on form right yeah. so don't talk to women in the gym let them uh if, if they talk to you then you can talk to them but yeah don't don't do that yeah. so um one more 
Faz, this one, uh, you run into this every time you're in the gym. The please, please go take a shower, dude. It's never, a, it's never a woman, but there's always some guy that has like seven layers of funka dunk, and he smells like, he smells like the King Kong of armpits. Like, please, do you have a soap allergy? Do you, uh, I mean, do you need me to buy you some Dove? A luxuriating exfoliating soap or something i don't know so is there anything more off-putting than smelling a hue hu humongous armpit in the gym i just don't understand how they can't smell it like when i'm when i'm a bit funky i can generally smell it and so i think i need to go shower so <laughs> i just don't know how they can look like that frankly but there you go yeah so i got a bonus one for you faz have you, have you ever been like in this day and age of the internet We've seen every exercise variation. We know what reasonable training is. Um, we know, uh, you know, we all have seen any lifter that's on the internet has seen the videos of somebody doing something ridiculous in the gym and we all share it and laugh. And then you go into the gym and there's that one guy doing like cable, like curls like this, like for minutes on end. And you're like, are we being punked? Yeah. Are we punked or are you filming this for social media or are you truly one of the rare birds that just has nothing in the tank? Funnily enough, I actually had that today. So, and I, I, I was waiting for some guy to finish up on his last, last set on the leg press. He loaded up and he hadn't taken the safety catches down. So the, the ROM was really small and his feet were out really wide and his knees were coming in and he was just like slamming the weight down, every rep, slamming the weight down and bouncing it off the safety catches. His form was terrible, just no focus whatsoever. And I thought to myself, surely this can't be real. This is what I read about on the internet. These are the memes that I see. It's this guy. People make memes about this guy on the leg press. Surely this is a joke, but no, like he was dead serious. So. People like that actually exist. Just when you think the internet could not get more ridiculous, people like that actually exist. Yeah, and, and my only thought usually is, number one, how do they change light bulbs? How do they change tires? And number two, how do they hold down a full-time job? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. All yeah. right, guys, those are seven gym douchebags plus a bonus one. If there's anyone we forgot, I left a comment down. Leave a comment down below. below. Please go over to Fazlifts link to youtube down below leave, subscribe leave a comment one comment will receive a hardcover edition of the muscle and brawn book it's almost 500 pages of really quality information all right fast thanks uh thanks for joining me we'll talk to you next time take care guys